Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a video that is uh, explaining the process of how to go through a general sine function and I think the best way to do this is just with an example. So we're given this function um, and we're, the goal is to turn it into a form where we have some amplitude and we can represent our cos and our sine from our first function given in terms of just a single sine function um, that has some sort of value here for our frequency and also some sort of phase shift, right? So given from our question, we can see that the value that is uh, the coefficient in front of the variable is going to be omega, which is given in our question. And then we also, so actually, yeah, that's all that we've given in this question. So we've got a times the sine of and we know it's pi over 2 is the omega and we don't know much else so what we can do here is we can rewrite a sine of or whatever we've got here and since it's the addition of two arguments what we can do is um, use one of our trig identities and we know that it's a times sine of the first argument sine or let me just keep that in red sine of pi over 2t and then cosine of the second argument phi and we're adding sine of the the other argument this time phi and then cosine of the first one And what you'll notice here is that we have got kind of common terms, and I just want to like refer you back to this first equation that we wrote, that we wrote. So it looks a little bit more similar now, where we have, and let's take a look at the the second term here. You see how we have sine of pi over two t, and we have in the term in the, in the first term that we've uh, written on the last line we've got sine of pi over 2t. So you can see that those terms are actually equal and we can equate those terms. Um, but more, more appropriately, we can equate the coefficients of these terms because we know that those must be equal. So what are the coefficients here? Let me get rid of the highlighter that I have right now. Ah. And I gotta correct that, give me one sec. So you can see that the coefficients that we've got on the top line, it's negative root two. And then the coefficients on the last line are a and cosine phi. Cosine phi, although it's uh, on, not on the, the left-hand side of the sign, it's still being multiplied by sine pi over two, so it's still a coefficient. We could rewrite it the same way, a cos phi. So we can now say that a times cosine of phi is equal to minus square root of 2. And similarly, let's take a look at the, the second term that we have. We've got cosine of pi over 2t. And then on the first line, we've got another common term. So we can take the coefficients and equate them. So root 2 is equal to, and you can see here, a sine phi. That's our coefficient, right? Because sine of phi and a, they're both just numbers. They will be coefficients, right? So then we can come up with a second equation. We have a times sine of phi is equal to square root of 2. So now we have two equations. And you'll see we've got two equations and two unknowns. We can solve this, right? We can solve this a number of ways. So um, let's solve for a first. And I'll show you another way um, after this if you don't like this, this method. But what we're going to do is we're going to square both of the equations. right? We, and we can do this because as long as we're doing it to both sides of the equation, it's still going to hold true. And then the second one, we've got a times sine squared phi equals 2. So now what we can do, we know that we can also um, 
we can add the equations, right? That holds true. It's, it's similar to elimination where you're subtracting equations. You can also add equations to get rid of variables. So now we've got a squared cosine squared of phi from the first one, and then the left-hand side of the second equation, and then we've got 2 plus 2, and those are both the right-hand sides. So let's factor out an a squared here. If we factor out a squared, we're left with cosine squared of phi plus sine squared of phi, and that's equal to 4. And I'm sure that you already can see that we have Pythagorean identity right here. So this is just equal to 1. So in other words, we've got a squared equals 4, or a equals plus or minus 2. And here we're actually we're given a choice. We can accept positive or minus, right? And this is just going to affect what our other variable is. So you can really choose whichever one you want. And I like taking the positive one because I always think it's easier to work with. But sometimes, sometimes that's not the case, but it really doesn't matter. So let's do a equals 2. And now, referring to our first equation and the second equation that we've got here, if a is 2, then, so from 1, we have 2 cos phi is equal to negative root 2. Sorry about that. And then from our second equation, we have 2 sine phi is equal to positive root 2. So now we just need to choose a phi that satisfies both of these equations. So let's rewrite these a little bit neater. We've got cos phi is negative root on 2. Uh, then we've got sine phi is positive square root 2 on 2. So we've got to write out our cast rule here. And we know that cosine is negative, so it can't be in the first quadrant, and it can't be in the f uh, fourth quadrant. So we've got sine is positive as well, which means that it's got to be in the second quadrant where sine is positive and cosine is negative. So solving both of our equations, we know phi, the, the primary angle will be pi on 4, right? But we're in the second quadrant, so it'll be pi minus pi on 4. Or in other words, this would be uh, 3 pi on 4. So we've solved for both of our unknowns, which means that we can just we can just write the equation now, because this is what it's asking. It's asking for the general form. So we chose a is two times sine of pi over two was our frequency here, and then our phase shift is three pi on four, and that's it. The questions like you can't really get you know, a crazy difficult general sine function questions because it's the same procedure for pretty much every question. So I want to show you just another way. Um, you can, there's nothing wrong with this way, but some people don't really like this whole squaring the equations, adding them together, not the most intuitive. So I'll show you another way that you can solve for your variables here. So we've got equation one and equation two. So this time, let's let's divide the equations. Let's do equation equation two divided by equation one. And the reason that I want to do that is because, and I'll show you in just a second here. It'll make a bit more sense. You'll see that our a's cross out and sine of phi over cos of phi that is that's tan of phi so this is negative one here so plugging this in tan of phi equals negative one 
and we know that this value here is going to be um, negative pi on four, or and or let me sh let me show my work here. So we've got we're just writing out the cast rule again. If tangent is negative, can't be in this quadrant and it can't be in this quadrant, which means that it can be in either of these quadrants. So we know that the primary angle from our special triangles it's still going to be pi on four. So we just can choose whichever phi that we want. It's going to be either in this quadrant, the, the fourth quadrant, or the second quadrant. So you can tell that we, because of the value of a that we chose, we ended up with a phi in uh, the second quadrant, the previous time that we went through this example. Let's choose, uh, let's choose a different phi though. Let's choose this one. And that's a negative pi on four. Or I guess let's, let's write it as, um, what, what was this, seven pi on, is it seven pi on four? Is that what it would be? Yeah, seven pi on four. So um, now we've got one value of our variable and we've got, we just plug them into either of our equations, either one or two. So let's choose one. We've got a cosine of seven pi on four is equal to negative square root of two. And we know that cosine of seven pi on four in this quadrant, since it's in the, it's on like the right hand side of our unit circle, we know that the x value or like the cosine of seven pi on four, that's gonna be a positive value. And the primary angle is pi on four. So from our special triangle, we know that the value would be square root of two over two square root of 2 over 2. That's equal to negative root 2. So then if you solve this, you would get minus 2 root 2 all over root 2, or a is equal to minus root 2. Sorry guys, it's off the page. So then finally, we could write x of t is equal to a is negative root 2 times sine of the frequency given in the question plus phase shift. In this case, it was 7 pi over 4. And that's a, another perfectly valid solution to this problem. And we solved it a completely different way as well.